On to kale bashing. This is one of my favorite things because who doesn't love a little good confirmation bias? No, but honestly, I try not to be um, biased in this way. I just find it interesting when mainstream uh, reporting here at Insider Magazine from 2019 says, kale might be bad for you in some cases. <laughs> Here's when you should be careful about eating it. How about all the time, Insider Magazine? But uh, this just looks gross to me. I would never put my hands in a a bucket of kale like that. Kale is packed with full of things that are good for you, like protein. That's a joke. Vitamin A, that's pretty much a joke. Why would you get beta carotene from kale when you can get it from liver or egg yolks? And vitamin K, well, kale only has vitamin K1, and we know that vitamin K2 is critical for humans as well. Vitamin K1 has no effects on cardiovascular risk and things like the Rotterdam study, but um, most people in the popular press and most vegans can't understand that vitamin K1 and K2 are different things. Neither could the doctors on that show when I went on there. They kept yelling at me, you can't get vitamin K in animal foods. And I was just like scratching my head. What, what, what are you actually freaking talking about? Insider says, but if you have an underactive thyroid, it might be a good idea to not to eat too much of it. No shit. This is what I've talked about so many times. The isothiocyanates in kale can affect iodine uptake at the level of the thyroid. I think these are harming our thyroids. And there's no reason to eat kale. Certain compounds in the vegetables can interfere with thyroid hormone synthesis and essentially block the iodine. Yep. Yeah, I've talked about that. You probably would have to eat an excessive amount for this to happen though. Well, <laughs> I mean, when I was a vegan, I ate two heads of kale a day. I'm pretty sure I was nuking my thyroid. And as I've shown in previous podcasts, there are studies that suggest that goitrin is another isothiocyanate found in things like uh, Brussels sprouts or chard and in levels that most people consume uh, in one salad or easily on a daily basis, they can affect radioactive iodine uptake at the level of the thyroid. This one is great. Kale also lists highly in the US for being contaminated with pesticides. So you should wash it thoroughly before eating it raw. Well, the main pesticide that kale is contaminated with is called Dacthal. Kale is now one of the most pesticide contaminated vegetables in 2019. And if you think you can get organic kale and get out of this, I have news for you. Stay tuned in this podcast. Kale samples contain traces of a weed killer named Dacthal. And DCPA, or Dacthal, is actually acknowledged by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States, to have negative endocrine disrupting effects on the thyroid. The EPA says glyphosate is totally fine, but Dacthal does affect the thyroid negatively. So if you're getting non-organic kale, you're getting a double whammy to your thyroid. Lest you think you can avoid this by getting organic kale, stay tuned for what's coming next. So the list of reasons you don't want to eat kale and leafy greens grows. This is from the highly reputable source, Delish. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking in 2018, but they did report that people are getting seriously sick from eating kale. It wasn't from the Dacthal. It was from the Thallium. <laughs> this is a really interesting study. This is a really interesting story. I want to try and get Ernie Hubbard on the podcast. And if you look at these articles from Craftsmanship Quarterly, which is the best storytelling I can find about this vegetable detective, this is fascinating. Ernie Hubbard is a practitioner who worked in Marin County. And what he began to see in his clinic, the Preventive Medical Center of Marin, was that a number of people in this growing health trend over the last uh, 12 years, 2010, um, were having problems, nonspecific symptoms, chronic fatigue, issues like that, and they were eating a lot of kale. And eventually he connected the dots and began to realize that, yes, um, leafy greens like kale. Obviously, I skipped over a ton of the story in between there, guys. You can read the whole thing if you want here on the uh, on the article. But he realized that many of these leafy greens do, in fact, take up heavy metals from the soil. Uh, we've known this for a long time, and kale is one of the worst offenders here. Many samples of kale have massive levels of thallium in them, a, a metal that is essentially toxic for humans. I think that much of this is based on this paper from Czech Republic. Um, the uptake of thallium from naturally contaminated soils into vegetables. So yet another reason you may not want to be eating vegetables unless you know what the quality of your soil is. I would just not eat vegetables in general. But thallium transfer from naturally uh, contaminated soils into vegetables was studied. They used multiple types of topsoils. What they found was that the uptake of thallium from soils with naturally high uh, pedogeochemical content of this element can be high enough to seriously endanger the food chain. These findings are very important because of the high toxicity of thallium, the absence of threshold limits for thallium in soils, agricultural products, feedstuffs, or foodstuffs in most countries, including the Czech Republic. So yes, no one is testing for thallium levels in kale. That thallium, that kale 
especially Lacinato, which used to be my favorite kale when I was a vegan, the dino kale appears to have the most thallium in it. According to the studies that Ernie Hubbard did in connection with Dr. Data, I also want to get David Quigg on the podcast, who is the chief science officer at Dr. Data. But um, the appearance of thallium in vegetables is commonly noted, with most of these leafy greens taking up heavy metals from the soil. It figures that we shouldn't really be eating leaves of plants, and I don't know why we are so obsessed with this, but thallium is just another reason not to eat leafy greens, especially not to eat kale. So hopefully I will get Ernie on the podcast and we can talk about the whole uh, story of his interesting exploration with his patients. Um, but he did a number of studies with Doctor's Data, he did a number of studies with his patients, and found that the kale was contaminated, they had high levels of thallium. When they got rid of that, they did really, they did much better in their lives. It's a fascinating thing. Certainly there's been much pushback there because people don't believe this is true, but I don't think anyone has been able to discredit the soundness of the, the measurements of doctor's data of the kale or of the patients or the clinical findings that this practitioner has found. So why would you not want to eat kale? Why is kale bullshit? <laughs> Isothiocyanates, which we talked about in the past, Pesticides like Dacthal, which definitely are going to affect the thyroid, even the EPA admits it. Uh, thallium, the list goes on and on. Uh, don't eat leafy greens, especially kale, but spinach is bullshit too because of the oxalates in there. When I was at White Oak Pastures two or three years ago for White Oak Chella, which is essentially the equivalent of our animal-based gathering, but we did it at White Oak Pastures before we knew the animal-based gathering was gonna be a thing. Uh, one of the guys came up to the podium and said that he had recently detoxified, had a whole detoxification protocol from thallium. And I said, where'd you get the thallium? And he said, kale. Oh yeah, of course. So I have met people anecdotally at least who had toxicity from eating too much kale. I would have to go back and look at the first times that I did provoked urine tests on myself, but uh, I certainly ate a lot of kale in my vegan days. And I wonder what my thallium levels were uh, historically. Like I said, I will do glyphosate levels in the future. With regard to the story of Ernie Hubbard and kale and thallium, there's a follow-up article in The Craftsman called The Vegetable Detective Part Two. Uh, you can see here they say, the first question involved the quality of Hubbard science. Perhaps the simplest answer to this question was delivered by Joshua Nachman, a nutritionist at JHU at Johns Hopkins University, Integrative Medicine Digestive Center. Nachman had occasion to quiz Hubbard about his work in response to a query from the Huffington Post. After several exchanges, Nachman came to the following conclusion. What he has found is good science. Nachman told me it's preliminary, not yet ready to be extrapolated to the population at large, but the chemistry is chemistry. It's all factual. So that's the most that I could find. I want to follow up on the story on Ernie Hubbard and thallium and kale. But if you eat a lot of kale or you have eaten a lot of kale, you might want to get your thallium levels checked. You can do that through Dr. Zeta, work with a functional medicine practitioner or just any practitioner that thinks holistically. Get your glyphosate levels checked. 